Hello! In my previous video tutorials, I explained how to create a development environment for Torino and how to use Azure Application Insights with Python web applications to collect telemetries. I also explained how to run the PostgreSQL DB in a Docker container and have telemetries collected for queries made against the PostgreSQL DB and logged into Azure Application Insights. In this video, I want to speak about something a bit different. So, I want to speak about how you can pack this application in a Docker image, how you can test the application running the Docker image locally, and how we can create the Docker image automatically using the GitHub workflows. So you can see at the root of the project, I have a Docker file. Let's take a look at it. This Docker file is using multi-stage builds, which are efficient because they create artifacts using different container using yes different containers and then packing the artifacts that are required to run the application so you can see first we have one step that builds the ui using the node.js image so this is a an example of how you can build a single page application you are creating using the create react, react app uh, the create react app command then i'm building the server which requires several dependencies to to install the required packages for example pillow to resize the pictures then i'm copying the build ui from the first stage to the application static folder i will show later how the server is configured to serve static files and then the last step is the image that gets published which has the the server with the, with the single page application so this is convenient because i wanted to provide a way to try to reno without having to go through the configuration steps that are required to run a real instance with everything configured application registrations in azure active directory in github secrets to run the workflows etc so let me show how to how to start the application using the provided docker image if we go back to the readme you will see it describes almost at the top that the system can be used in two modes one that i named express mode and the second one which is normal mode as i just said the normal mode requires several configuration steps while the express mode can be tried right away it only requires a storage account having a uh, course enabled for the blob service. The command to run the image this way is pretty simple. It's a fish to say docker run, mapping a local part, port to the container port 80, and configuring storage account name, storage account key. So let me run it. I will go back to the storage account and I will copy again the keys. I'm recording the keys because anyway, I will rotate them before publishing the video. So it's not a security problem. And I think this is useful to, uh, for the tutorial. So I will go to the access keys section. I will copy the storage account name. Beware that in sometimes it doesn't work, this copy to the clipboard. So let me see if it worked. I will create two configuration to environmental variables account name yeah, it didn't work as i said it often doesn't work this, this um, copy account name equal account key equal i will copy the account key Yes, and now I will run the command by describing the readme of the project. So Docker, oh sorry, Docker run mapping a port, let's say 8080, 80. then, and to not make mistakes, I will copy the, uh, the names of the environmental variables which are handled by the storage, by the Docker image, app storage account name, app storage account key. Here I will pass the use the environmental variable declared.
I will type the name. Of course, if you don't trust me, you can clone the repository, verify that nothing fishy happens in the code, and you can create your own image using the Docker file, which is included in the repository. Let me also specify that it should be automatically removed when it stops. Now, the application started in the container. I can go to the local port 8082 to see the running system. It worked. So now the web requests are being answered by the application running in the Docker container. If I go to the albums, I still, I still can see the albums that were configured in the previous tutorials, because uh, as I explained, but in this case, the application is fetching the list of albums from the table API of the storage account we just configured. And I will find the same files that were uploaded previously. Of course, I can upload new files, but I'm not going through this uh, at, the, at, the, at this moment. So, uh, let me show you how the Docker image is built using Docker action, uh, GitHub Actions and automatically pushed to Docker Hub. It's very easy. All you need is a workflow file like this one, like Docker image YAML provided here. What it does, it is using four steps, which you can find on the, uh, on the official documentation about the GitHub Actions. And it requires two secrets, Docker Hub username and Docker Hub token. In this case, Docker Hub username is uh, Roberto Prevato, and the Docker Hub token is an access token I created here under my account settings. I'm in Docker Hub here. I'm under account uh, settings, security, and you have here access tokens. You create an access token with having read, write, and delete access, and then you can start publishing uh, images directly to Docker Hub from GitHub Actions. And I like this kind of uh, workflow to, to, be, to be run manually sometimes. So in this case, I wanted to be able to run manually the workflow, knowing when, when I should deploy to Docker Hub. Of course, you can use different kinds of triggers depending on your preference. But in this case, I have a workflow dispatch without any input, which lets me do something like this. I go to Actions build docker image and i can do run workflow selecting the branch in this case the main branch of the repository is named dev because i wanted to make make it clear that the main branch of the repository contains the unstable development code of the for the system in a in the future if i wanted to have a test and production environment what i would personally do i would have a, one branch for each environment I will uh, create the development environment from dev branch, the test environment from the test branch, and the production environment from a production branch. But again, this is subject to uh, this subjective. This de it depends on the notion of DevOps you, you have in your organization. So um, when you run this workflow um, manually, it will start something like this. And you can see the the logs, what what does what it did, and one of the last steps it builds the the image and pushes it to Docker Hub. Now uh, the last thing I want to show in this video is how the API, the web app, is serving the single page application. It's a simple configuration. You have it here, server, app program and it's a single command application serve files from the static folder fallback document index html this is necessary to enable the html5 history api for client-side routing because the the application as you can see here it's using history api for the client-side routing so if i refresh this page i don't have any album index html it is serving the index html from the root which then handles through javascript the, 
we think to this page. You see? And uh, allow anonymous true, which is necessary because by default, when uh, application app registrations and Azure Active Directory are configured, the API requires authentication by default. And it, to know more information about this topic, you can refer to the official documentation of Black Sheep, which is available under Neoteroi. dot dev black sheep you will find here history how to serve SPAs that use HTML5 history API history API and that's uh, that's everything so in this video I showed how you can use GitHub Actions to deploy to build and deploy Docker images to Docker Hub I showed how the Torino can be started immediately using a Docker image. And in the next tutorial, I will speak about how to configure the app registrations in Azure Active Directory so that you can enable authentication and authorization on the, the system. Thank you.